In this video, I will explain how to work with uh, abrasive grit sizes. I will explain the right way and the wrong way of surface finishing. It could be a surface finishing for uh, sanding wood for paint grade, or it could be surface finishing on uh, cutlery items. It's going to be a handheld shot, and uh, I'm going to have to take the camera off the tripod to capture here what I prepared. And uh, just give me a moment here to put away some stuff. And off we go. Letter box. So, what I have here on the table is a bunch of sandpapers, two knives, file, metal samples, a paper tape measure, and uh, rocks in trays. In uh, another title, uh, Abrasive Grid Sizes, I explained how the coated abrasives in sandpaper uh, and their abrasive grid sizes work together. Basically, the, uh, these numbers on a sandpaper refer to the uh, number of uh, openings in a certain area in a sieve where the crushed rock is being sieved and sorted at a coated abrasive manufacturer uh, and uh, you can see some of the samples here and as we go from 40 grit to 220 to 600 grit uh, all the way to 2000 grit the particle size in the sandpaper there's my nail and hand for reference the particle size in the actual sandpaper is getting finer and finer and this one is the coarsest here the coarsest sandpaper where the particle sizes are clearly visible and if I put a tape measure next to it for reference you can have a you can have a pretty intelligent guess here that about the size of these particle uh, these particles here uh, bear with me this is a handheld shot and uh, the highly reflective surfaces are kind of hard to capture. So, the right way and the wrong way to sand uh, could be illustrated with these two rows of rocks here. In this line here, going all the way towards the open door there, I have crushed rock here. This represents, not for its physical size, but uh, for its nature, represents the size of abrasive rock that gets just glued onto a sandpaper. There's nothing much to sandpaper making or, uh, or abrasive disc, grinding disc making, as these numbers 24 there refer to the abrasive uh, particle size in uh, uh, I just flip this one around the abrasive particle size in the product there we go you can see the abrasive rock particularly along the edge and as this one is crushed rock uh, we go from uh, coarse to finer to ever finer to super fine and basically we're down to coarse sand size. Uh, now this coarse sand size doesn't really correspond to a 2000 grit sandpaper but, uh, but uh, this is uh, to give you an illustration how the particle size goes down and the, uh, and the number on the abrasive uh, product goes up from 40 80, 100, 220, 600, down to 2000 at the end. Here on this uh, other row of trees here, I have rocks again, but uh, this line here is not crushed rock. This is river rock, which makes the rocks rounded. You can see that here, the rocks have jagged edges and are sharp, and I 
I uh, nearly cut my finger while I was sorting some of these rocks. All of, rocks, all of these are sharp and all of these are round. Okay, even the, one, even the ones that are uh, angled, they are all rounded. So what this represents is that uh, when you start working with a certain grit of sandpaper, the abrasives in it start at sharp as they are represented in crushed rock uh, that have uh, jagged edges. As you keep working and working with a certain grit of uh, sandpaper, what uh, happens to these crushed rocks, what happens to the uh, abrasive uh, material in it, all the individual particles get rounded, like so, get rounded down or fractured, and uh, the naturally, the rounded and worn abrasive uh, doesn't erode material or doesn't wear away material as effectively as the sharp ones. So, when you start uh, sanding something, this is how you can save some time and save some headache. Sandpaper is cheap. Uh, I'm not going to do math on this one, but uh, your wages are expensive. Okay, a sandpaper is, I don't know, 10 cents, 20 cents a sheet, something like that. When it's fresh, all the individual abrasive particles in it, they have sharp, jagged edges, and they tear out uh, material, wood or metal, whatever you are sanding, that corresponds to the physical size of the rock that's used to make up the abrasive uh, product. In use, these rocks in it get rounded down and worn down. They do not remove uh, wood or metal, whatever you're sanding, not, uh, nowhere near as effectively. Okay, that's what I have here. Sharp rock, dull rock. For all of these individual sandpaper grits, sharp, dull. And you can see all of these pieces here roll around easily, whereas these uh, don't barely move and you can see sharp jagged edges on the individual rocks whereas on these ones they are all uh, nicely rounded river rock. Okay, that's what these rocks here represent. So a smart way to work again is uh, when you start sanding you notice that for a certain amount of time depending on the hardness of material that you are sanding. In soft wood, you know, sandpaper is going to last longer before it wears, before the uh, particles in it wear down and dull. But uh, there comes a point, uh, whether you're sanding hardwood or softwood or uh, low carbon steel or uh, something very hard, there comes a point that you notice that it doesn't remove uh, material nearly as effectively as it did when it was fresh change your sandpaper okay because your wages cost a lot and sandpaper doesn't cost a lot okay uh, your employer your boss expects you to know this and uh, and change sandpaper accordingly every so often uh, I'm not saying uh, waste away a, a truckload of it in a day but don't be standing there sweating and working hard we're using the same sandpaper piece for two and a half hours because that's not gonna fly well okay that's basically the idea here that's how to use sandpapers smartly another aspect of the same thing is that if you want to produce a highly polished uh, either wood surface or metal surface whether you're going for a paint grade on wood or you're going for a mirror polish on a, on a metal item don't start with the grade of sandpaper that produces the final finished surface, okay? You're gonna have to start at the coarsest that's around in the shop because the coarsest sandpaper will uh, rip out and remove uh, particles that correspond to the uh, rock that's in it. And then you're gonna have to move to a smaller pieces and uh, in order to achieve a nice and even surface all over. A smaller rock size and there's an even smaller one. I'm gonna flip this one around there. So you're gonna have to gradually move
to finer and finer sandpapers. If you are making paint grade wood, uh, maybe uh, maybe not 40 grit, but uh, 60 grit, uh, 80 grit, 100 grit, and it's good to go. Uh, 120 is uh, maybe not that. Uh, maybe that's pushing it for paint grade, okay? And uh, for metal, you can see I have two metal items. This one is duller and is also rusty. But uh, where it's not rusty, it's also duller overall. And uh, that partially explains why this one rusts easier. The higher the surface polish in a metal item, uh, it means that the size of grooves in, the, in its surface are smaller and smaller because the size of grooves in a surface are caused by these abrasives which are carefully graded and uh, sorted to make the sandpaper and uh, if you want to produce a fine surface finish you're gonna have to go with a fine sandpaper but again uh, start at the far end of the room at a coarse grade and uh, and gradually work your way up there okay don't be wasting hours trying to get something done with 600 grit sandpaper because uh, they will remove material so slowly and so minutely that uh, you're not gonna be able to send out all the dimples and all the surface imperfections with the 600 grit sandpaper uh, anytime soon and that's just gonna uh, cost a lot of money for your uh, for your boss or for yourself so that's basically how to work smart with uh, sandpapers consider the uh, consider the grid size the finished grade and don't start with your finished grade start with uh, a coarse grade and work your way gradually down and keep in mind uh, how much material is being removed as you work along and uh, when your sandpaper is worn, just change it.